Pop quiz teachers, you are workationing in a new city and just like Henry Rollins, you want to search and enjoy all of the city has to offer. But unfortunately, you spend all of your day thinking about food, planning meals, going to Conveni. At the end of the day, you have no time, money or energy left to enjoy the city. What do you do? What do you do? You stay tuned. Ja -ja -ja, low tech intro and good morning Japan. Woo. My name is Michael Hora and welcome to Keeping the SL Dream Alive, the channel that inspires you, the heroic English educator on your epic journey to the tippy tippy top of your trade while also getting paid like the celebrity SL teacher you know you were always meant to be. If this sounds like you or someone you'd like to become, please consider subscribing below me. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and watch the end because this is the stuff ESL dreams are made of. Woo! What I do for a living may not be very reputable, but I am in this town. I'm the leper with the most fingers. So here's the scene. You are in a new city, whether you are on a business trip, a teaching trip, maybe you are a new teacher in Japan. How cool is that? Either way, you're probably in an unfamiliar area, very exciting place to be. You are probably on a tight schedule. And unless you're already a celebrity ESL teacher, you may be on a tight budget, but have no fear. We can turn all of these challenges into advantages. We can prioritize and maximize your time, money, and energy with today's hack, which is OMAD. This is your day. This is your day on OMAD. So what is OMAD? No, it's not the latest best method in second language acquisition teaching. It is not some cool hipster method of learning those difficult kana through singing karaoke in the late hours. OMAD is a type of intermittent fasting where instead of eating three small meals a day or three big meals, depending on you, and saving up all your calories, energy, and money to enjoy one meal. And you're definitely gonna want to watch to the end of this video where I tell you exactly how I think you should enjoy those extra calories, money, and energy at the end of the evening. Naughty, naughty. Now, whoa, 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 I know what you're thinking, Michael. Michael, you have one of the most dad bods in Japan, maybe one of the most dad bods in the world. So who are you to give us dieting advice? To that, I would first say, How dare you? Then I would politely say, this is not fat. This is just good living. I would then remind you that I am not a medical doctor. This video is purely an explanation of the convenience and time-saving benefits of OMAD for teachers who find themselves in a new city or a new travel destination. If you want to find out more about the science behind intermittent fasting and OMAD, feel free to check out the full interview I was lucky enough to do with renowned celebrity neuroscientist Andrew Huberman. And this is today's sponsor, not really. And of course, as always, DYOR, do your own research, uh, especially when it comes to health. With today's economy and cultural climate, I think uh, there is a need for us to stay healthy and teach late into our 80s or 90s. Anecdotally, I think for me it has been a game changer in terms of productivity, and I'm sure you will agree that I look very young for my age. I definitely look younger than 50. 60? So before I give you all the OMAD tips and tricks, let me tell you very quickly how I discovered OMAD. First, I was born. So I've had a love-hate relationship with breakfast. I like to cook it. I like to prepare it. I like to eat it. I like the way eggs and toast with butter feel in my stomach when I'm sleeping on the train on the way to work in the morning. But at the same time, I don't like the way it makes me feel like my morning has been hijacked, give some extra stress and cortisol as I rush to get out the door in the morning. I also don't like the fact that I think it took me until junior high school to suddenly realize that breakfast comes from the word break fast. It made me hangry. But regardless, I kept eating breakfast diligently until my 40s. Thanks, cereal companies. But that all changed as a celebrity university teacher having to wake up when it was still dark in the winter time to chug a lug some coffee, eat some eggs and toast and rush out the door to catch a one hour commute. Fortunately, my town is the last town on the Tokaido line where you can 
be guaranteed a seat if you arrive on time. I would enjoy the nice warm trains in the wintertime. After breakfast, being a bit sleepy, half listening to an audiobook, half kind of dozing. I remember one time a fellow businessman was sitting beside me and we both kind of like were pushing to get the most territory on the seat, kind of glaring at each other, very, very aggro. And uh, dozing off, waking up at Tokyo Station and we were like all labu labu, snuggled together, glared at each other once again and got off the train. Good times on the Tokaido line. Snuggles done and one more transfer on the way to my university town. I would quickly pop by a convenience store, a kombini, grab a canned coffee and a few rice balls to tide me over until lunchtime. But then I discovered intermittent fasting instead of waking up early and wolfing down a breakfast, I would prepare a very healthy meal, bring it in a thermos and enjoy it. After my classes were finished at lunch, in the beautiful botanical garden at my university where they grew medicinal plants with lots of flowers and herbs and butterflies fluttering by. I occasionally was tempted to pull a karate kid with my chopsticks and grab one, but that is not SDG friendly. Please do not do things like that when you are in Japan. Behave. Now on busy work days, I skip the meal prep in the morning. I don't lug a heavy thermos around with me all day. I just wait until I get home in the evening to enjoy a nice meal or go out for a nice dinner with family and friends. And that's what I'm recommending you consider on your next trip. So what does your new morning OMAD routine look like instead of rushing from your hotel room to be the first in line with uh, grouchy hotel guests? to stand in line for your complimentary breakfast, which, unless you're already a celebrity ESL teacher, is probably not that great anyway. I heard that. You have a chance to sleep in for an extra hour. If you're so inclined, maybe you're busy from the trip to the hotel, you can lounge around your bed, reading books, playing Tsumu Tsumu, or Plants vs. Zombies, whatever your heart desires, or explore the neighborhood and get mentally prepared for your day and for the adventures. And then on the way from the hotel to your place of work, you can skip the carbohydrate and preservative rich protein and vegetable poor bentos. After all, this is Japan, the land of awe-inspiring food. Why waste your time, money and calories on subpar when you can save yourself? wait until the evening and eat like a king or queen or jester if that is your choosing uh you deserve it now it's mid-morning you can already see your co-workers energy is starting to decline but not you you are so immersed in the flow of your lesson or your work plan that with the aid of some black coffee you hardly notice and at lunchtime when your co-workers are sitting in those little kids desks with their faces glued to their phones wolfing down their unhealthy bentos, maybe grabbing a quick serotonin-induced snooze on their desk before the next class, you have one hour of you time. You are laughing. <laughs> no, you're not laughing at your coworkers. That would be elitist. That is a no-no. Don't be that kind of person. Instead, you're laughing because you're thinking about the reservations you have at that posh restaurant in the evening. Then after laughing, you can go for a leisurely walk, get energized and rejuvenated for the evening festivities and your afternoon sessions. In the second half of the day, when your coworkers are fighting postprandial somnolence, that's food coma, thanks Wikipedia, you are teaching your highest energy classes ever. The long four to five, five to six, depending on the gig, Teaching day done, your co-workers will likely head back to the hotel to take a nap before going out for dinner, but not you. Your calling is done, it's time to go and have some fun. Of course, fun is super subjective, so whatever fun means to you. When you're in a new city in Japan, there's always something weird and wonderful waiting around every corner. I like to spend a few hours listening to audiobooks while exploring a new city. I recommend this one. It's like Groundhog Day, but set in Japan, and the protagonist is a university student, not Bill Murray as a weatherman. That's not bad for a quadruped. You gotta check your mirrors, just side of your eye. Side of your eye.
I like to fly drones in parks, occasionally fly drones in my hotel room. I like to check out Book Off, or even better, Hobby Off. Later in the evening, I like to check out a play, a movie, maybe if I'm in Osaka, like Manzai or Rakugo. Or even go check out a punk rock show if some cool bands are playing in the neighborhood. And as a pro tip, I highly recommend, and this is today's sponsor, not really, can make uh, easy to apply one swish. You won't even notice that you have that black eye from that stage dive. Magic. And now it is time for the main event. <laughs> Your first world problem of trying to figure out how to spend all that time, money, and energy you have saved throughout the day omading. Japan is famous for its amazing food culture. We're talking sushi, sashimi, tofu, natto, tempura, ramen, udon. But why choose only one when you can enjoy all of them in one location like a Viking? And no, I'm not talking about Vikings and beekeepers. I'm talking about Viking in Japan, which stands for, if you're not already initiated, all you can eat buffet. Just find the buffet that is focused on what you are interested in eating, what's in season, what you would like to enjoy in this new city. I personally don't like buffets with fried food and meat. So in places like Kobe, I would choose some place like this that is heavy on vegetables, a little bit of seafood, and maybe even some pizza. Most of Japan's posher hotels are also good choices. Pro tip, Japan is known not only for its tabe hodai, all you can eat, but also for its nomi hodai, all you can drink. And while I do not condone the consumption of alcohol the evening before a program, there is nothing wrong with unwinding on the final day after your, of course, incredibly successful program has concluded with a nice nomi hodai before catching the bullet train back home again. Jiggity jig. Of course, you can also use some of those calories and money you save throughout the day omading in a posh upscale supermarket. Maybe grab some 50% off food, sushi, nice high quality bento at the end of the day, seven o'clock on, often it's discounted. Grab that, go enjoy a nice buffet of your own under the stars. Or you can do what I like to do take some of that money to extend your stay for a day or two and enjoy the city even more on your workation. So that's Omad, the magic spell that will make your trip to a new city in Japan unforgettable. It can help you save time, money, and energy while allowing you the chance to explore everything Japan has to offer. But remember, it's all about creating a balance between work and play. Finding ways to optimize your lifestyle for maximum productivity and enjoyment. So if the complimentary breakfast at your hotel is so good, I'm talking Peninsula Hotel in Hong Kong good, don't pass up the opportunity. Definitely indulge. Maybe instead of OMAD, check out my new soon-to-be patented program, not really, BBAD, Big Breakfast and Dinner. And if you want to create more situations where you experience great luck like this, you're not going to want to miss this video. Let's go, 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 go.